Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, March 26, 2023. It's about 11.39 a.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the latest quake shows a 2.7 over here into the Turkey area. Uh, we did see a little bit of uptick kicking off across the planet last night. We'll go ahead and check that out here in just a minute. First, I want to bring up a little bit of weather concerns here for the portions of the south uh, and to also areas where we've seen those uh, tornadoes hit a couple nights ago into the Mississippi area kind of like pouring salt into an open wound out here we do have severe weather potential here uh, they have enhanced the area uh, for a moderate that's uh, just one step below the highest level of severe uh, five would be the highest. Right now we're at a four for a good portion. Uh, that includes areas of Montgomery, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Alexandria, uh, Meridian, and the Prattville, uh, Alabama area. All in that moderate category. Now you don't have to be specifically within this red zone here to be um, affected by some severe weather and strong tornadoes. This is just the most likelihood uh, where the dynamics will take place uh, far as you know all the ingredients needed uh, to produce a supercell capable of producing a uh, strong tornado the enhanced level extends all the way back here to eastern texas and the much broader view of thunderstorm activity uh, as you can see here is in the green and it stretches across numerous states now looking at the tornado potential today 15 percent hatched area for portions of montgomery uh, jackson auburn uh, hadesburg alexandria all those folks are included in that significant severe zone, which is a 15% hatched area uh, for tornado uh, probabilities. That's a 10% uh, or greater probability of an EF2 to an EF5 within 25 miles of a point. Today's a, a very um, interesting day because you definitely need to be aware of what's going on around you today in this area. I will check out the radar here in just a second. Uh, also, a concern is going to be some wind and hail events. I think uh, wind, obviously, with these storm systems and um, these uh, thunderstorms, you get some straight line winds, which could be damaging to uh, to an extent. Talking about 10% or greater probability of wind gusts over 65 knots within 25 miles of a point. 30% hatched area, it looks like, for Jackson, Mississippi, Meridian area. Clinton there in the red uh, 30 percent zone now hail is going to be the other uh, major concern here for this area a elevated 45 percent chance of seeing some uh, fairly good sized hail two inch diameter hail or larger now two inch yeah that can do some damage but uh, also at the same time some of that hail can get much larger than that uh, this time of year in these uh, in the states down here so be prepared for weather uh, that is kicking up currently right now as we speak. A look at the radar imagery here across portions of the south. Show quite a bit of storms popping up here into eastern Texas already outside here of Jasper and the um, uh, Louisiana border area. All seeing these storms fire up. Um, and it looks as though, let me bring up the, uh, where's my radar scope at? Right here. Here's the uh, little bit better imagery here of what's going on. There is a tornado watch that has been a uh, has been issued across already right and this is outside this is outside of that main zone uh, the highest area is going to be in this red um, you can kind of see it the red outline here but the tornado watch has actually been issued well away from it and further to the west so this is a, a very dynamic setup here and it could get interesting throughout the day but right now tornado watch for Louisiana and Texas area uh, in the red triangle box here where these severe storms are just starting to pop up. Um, Jasper's in the uh, lineup here for uh, some severe weather, it looks like. Not quite into the severe um, storm yet, but they do sit within that uh, tornado watch area. So just a heads up here for eastern Texas and a good portion of uh, Louisiana here. And again, this sits just to the west here of, of the highest hatched area where we're looking at the probability of, uh, you know, the most extreme weather today. So be on guard for this area. Goodness. Already get some uh, some storms forming up here. 
around the Alexandria area. Let's go ahead and check out a couple different models here and see what we're looking at, the potential of what this could look like uh, a little bit later on this afternoon. We'll bring in the um, South Central US here. And a good model to watch is the HRR model uh, or the NAM. Uh, there's many different uh, weather models here to watch in terms of the severe weather uh, potential. So down here, eastern Texas, already getting that line of thunderstorms developing uh, throughout the afternoon. We're expecting that to advance north and then to the east. And this is the area right here is that low pressure as a as the uh, system kind of pulls all this moisture off. That's when you get the the uh, the proper shear and the uh, uplift and the development of the storms that are capable of producing a tornado. There's a low pressure system, but that's going to be pulling off towards the northeast and uh, leaving in uh, a line of activity here that could bring in some supercell storms and uh, tornado potential uh, throughout the afternoon and evening time period. Uh, could be a little scary on the uh, on that aspect considering all the damaging weather that the south has seen over the last uh, couple days down there in mississippi uh, specifically pretty uh pretty scary scenario but that's um you know it's a springtime and it does happen out here folks we do get that spring uh weather set up down there a lot of people are saying that uh you know that tornado alley is kind of shifting more towards the southeast the typical tornado alley uh, roughly over here, just east of the, the Rockies around Oklahoma, uh, Nebraska, Kansas area, northern Texas. But it se definitely seems uh, as though that is shifting to the east. But this is all also dependent on the type of uh, well weather patterns that are out here throughout the year. Uh, El Nino, La Nina. Um, we are just getting out of a triple dip La Nina pattern, um, which has been very dry for us here along the west coast, except for this winter. Uh, this winter was almost like an, a strong El Nino pattern. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of, you know, inconsistencies on typical weather patterns, right? You can't really predict one after the other, uh, but you can kind of look at trends, so to speak, and then make forecasts off of that basis that you're looking at. Uh, but a lot of times the uh, La Nina pattern does favor a typical setup down here. And we'll watch... Uh, throughout the spring and summer, see how this advances northward. Uh, looking at the, let's go over here to the day five outlook, we have a severe weather potential set up here for Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas. I would love to get out there for this setup because it's outside of the trees uh, down here into the south. A lot of forested areas and very dangerous conditions, whether it's daytime or nighttime. Uh, to monitor weather uh, and to report on severe weather potential. Uh, out here, a lot more open plains, not a whole lot of uh, obscured views. It's all open, uh, at least in this area. So it looks as though on day five, that's going to be a severe weather threat out here for uh, those states uh, as listed. Into day six, it shifts east a little bit, but a broader area of uh, possible severe weather taking place into day six either way this is kind of a significant uh setup uh for uh for a few days out so we'll continue to watch that and see how this plays out as uh time gets closer but now uh, again looking at these thunderstorms popping up a couple of these are already severe and they are within that tornado watch area um we'll watch this as this advances and of course a lot of these storms will pop up just out of the blue um, and it looks as though that uh, already starting to happen out here, but pay close attention to this area here around Mississippi uh, and also uh, advancing uh, this uh, line of thunderstorms. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here for earthquake activity. What's going on out here along the West Coast? Well, not a whole lot in Northern California. Still seeing some spotty activity across the San Andreas Fault. Um, and some movement down south here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Nothing major uh, popping off. We did see late last night a three-pointer pop up here outside of the Ridgecrest area to the east. Uh, a 3.6 near the Trona area. Looks like that's kind of just off the fault systems here. North of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone uh, by a distance. Uh, aside from that little spotty activity down south, I think that's the only three-pointer we've seen uh, in the area along the west coast. 
Uh, looking at the rest of the activity here across the country, pretty quiet in terms of earthquake movement. Severe weather potential, definitely uh, not quiet at all. So be on guard uh, in that area. Uh, the Caribbean plate and areas around Puerto Rico definitely shown uptick here. We noticed that last night in the update. Looks like that has continued overnight. And this morning with quite a few threes popping up here around the Puerto Rico Trench and the Dominican uh, Republic area. We did see uh, a couple fours yesterday as well. Noticing a little swarm up here around the Mona Seamount. Uh, getting in on some threes, upper threes. Uh, in that area, very close here to the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, and some broader activity as well around Puerto Rico. Continue to watch that here for some uh, larger scale movement. Look on the EMSC model globe. Shows the western side here. Uh, up against the Caribbean plate and the uh, Cocos plate. Going to be this little Cocos plate, Caribbean plate over here to the east. All shown some movement, elevated activity along the Middle America Trench. That's going to be this section right here. Looks like uh, USGS not reporting as much as what the EMSC model is reporting. There's a lot more activity taking place here uh, than what's noted on the flat scale model. Earth down here into the South America region as well. Quite a few fours, threes, even a five pointer down here into the South America area. Somewhat showing up here on the USGS map. Some fours and fives. Um, this one here relatively shallow. Uh, 6.3 kilometers deep. We have seen some deeper movement quakes here in this area. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a larger movement quake upstream um, from this from this deeper movement. All right, uh, Alaska area. Um, I don't think we got anything major going on up there. A couple twos and some threes. Looks like we did have a 4.3 yesterday along the Aleutian Trench today. Uh, not so much activity. Still seeing a little bit of microquake movement here across the Tanaga and the Takawango volcano, although it looks like most of this activity is from yesterday. So nothing uh, kicking up here this morning so far. Western side here of the Pacific Plate. One earthquake here off into the Japan Trench this morning. Looks like a 4.9, 68 kilometers deep. And a look at the globe here kind of confirms that as well. Uh, not a whole lot of activity yet around the Mariana Trench or the Izu Trench or the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. All these areas uh, building up strain, no doubt. Uh, today, still seeing some movement up here along the Java Trench area. Yesterday, we did notice an advancement up around the bend here. Looks like it was wanting to start to uh, take off and head up north along this plate boundary, but it's since stopped and continued to back build here along portions of the Indonesia area and also around the Philippines. So this is the hot spot of earthquake activity today with quite a few fours and even uh, a five or so in there uh, listed up here on the map. Again, a lot of it's missing off the flat scale model earth. Uh, EMSC is reporting a lot of activity throughout this region. There's that 5.1 that kicked off here earlier this morning into the Indonesia area around the Banda Sea. Over here, Fiji area and the uh, Port Vila region of Vanuatu. A couple fours from yesterday. Nothing popping up here today, according to the USGS. Uh, looks to be the case. Some older rings here on the globe indicating that movement from yesterday. One three-pointer down here into the New Zealand area. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers and uh, see what we may have going on down there. Three-pointer, South Island. 2.7 just outside of Wellington, it looks like, to the north. 22 minutes ago. A little bit of scattered activity, it looks like, down there today. Um, as far as broad scale, major movement goes, not really seeing it. Uh, an earth a quick glance here at the earthquake drums will verify that. A lot of times these earthquake drums are sometimes easier for me to read than uh, looking at the actual numbers that the uh, GeoNet servers throw up on their little map. I uh, kind of like the layouts here of the drums. It gives us a good indicator of what's going on on a broad area and the um, you know potential magnitudes out here as well because the larger ones will definitely show up across the majority of these seismograph drums. And it doesn't look like there's too much activity out there across New Zealand today. All right, uh, let's see what else we got um, further west. Uh, what do we got? Eastern Afghanistan did see a 4.4. Some movement there in Iran yesterday. A glance here at the EMSC model for this area. Shows a little bit calmer conditions today. 
This was uh, lit up pretty nicely yesterday and the day before. Just some small microquake activity, aftershock activity into the Turkey region. Uh, this morning it looks like Atlantic Ocean all pretty quiet. Um, let's see here. What else? I see a newer four-pointer up there into Alaska. Look at that four-pointer right there into the Cook Inlet area. Or, uh, um, yeah, up here. Where is it, though? That's a good question. Let me see. Possible the USGS has not picked up on it yet. They are showing a 3.6 here in this area. Uh, at uh, 910. Let's see if that was it. I guess that's it, yeah. Uh, EMSC reporting a 4.0, USGS a 3.6. So at least it's being reported. Uh, looking at that time frame here, it matches up with uh, what USGS is reporting. All right, uh, let's see here. All right, uh, space weather activity. We'll jump off here. And then I'm just going to be monitoring the uh, weather out there into the south today. Kind of keeping an eye on things. Uh, either way, make sure you got your weather radio set up. Make sure it's got batteries. Uh, be alert today out there in the south. Severe weather potential likely. It's already firing up. All right, coronal hole activity number 88. Getting closer here to the center portion of the disk of the sun. That will possibly enhance some conditions later on this week uh, as it uh, shoots out some high-speed solar particles. A look at the solar sunspots here. Seeing if any of these have advanced overnight. Doesn't look like it. Uh, still, if any reason, uh, any region I were to watch, it would be this area down here. Uh, a little bit of unstable magnetic features here, close together. Aside from that, um, this one here kind of looks like it's bumped up a little bit. I don't think we have too much around the bend as far as the eastern limb of the sun. So, again, not a whole lot of potential. Just a couple areas to watch maybe for some upper sea flares. 90% chance for a sea flare. M flare at 10. X flare around 1%. And no major solar storms are expected. And that's about it. All right, folks. Have a good day. Again, stay safe out there in the south. And uh, heed to all weather warnings if you can. Uh, stay, you know, stay inside and always, uh, you know, just try to be safe out there. Keep your family safe. And we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight. Have a good one, everyone.